Good afternoon and welcome to our Colorado New Student Connections webinar. My name is Brett Bruner. I'm the Director of First Year Experience, Persistence and Retention here at Fort Hayes State University. We are so excited to have this opportunity to chat with each one of you as a new student coming from the state of Colorado. Um, I'm not going to stay on this side much longer. I'm going to turn the floor over to some of our awesome orientation leaders um, who are current students or one recent graduate um, from the state of Colorado so they can talk to you um, about their experiences as a new student from Colorado here at Fort Hayes State. If you do have any questions, um, each one of them are going to start with some introductions about themselves, how they wound up at Fort Hayes, what they kind of like about their experience at Fort Hayes, um, and then we're really here to answer whatever questions that you might have. So there is the, the Q&A box where you can type in your questions and we will respond to several of those questions as we go throughout the session. So uh, if you need, if you have any technical issues, um, feel free to let us know. But I'm going to move to the back side of the camera, and we are going to turn the floor over to our orientation leaders. All right. Hi. Um, I'm Gina. I'm from Westminster. Um, hope y'all know where that is. It's like 20 minutes outside of Denver. Um, graduated from Stanley Lake in 2012. And I'm about to start my third year here at Fort Hayes. And I'm a nursing major. And I will be starting the program in January. Um, the reason why I came to Fort Hayes was because I thought I wanted to be a marine biologist. But I hated the idea of having to go to the ocean and away from my family. And I also decided I didn't like fish. <laughs> and so that was, those were two big things. And my dad actually graduated from Fort Hayes. And he said, oh, you should check it out. I was like, oh, but it's Kansas. That sucks. And so I just did. And I sat out in front of Pippin. And I was like, this is my home. This is where I should be. Um, my One of my favorite things about being here is actually the small town feel because I came from a graduating class of over 380 and I love how small it is and how everyone is so personal and uh, like the faculty members that I'm dealing with in the nursing department genuinely want to know how my summer is and let me like text me whenever they have questions or just want to know how I'm doing and it's so great to know that they that there's actually a connection there instead of lots of people and they're just little fish. So yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jade. I'm from Denver, Colorado, and I'm also a nursing major, um, which is part of the reason I came here because the nursing um it, the program here is huge and there's nurses everywhere. <laughs> um I didn't know I was coming to Hayes until the spring of my senior year and that was because I came on the Colorado bus trip where they take the charter bus and pick up a bunch of students from Colorado and bring them all out here and the bus bar actually broke down on the way here and I was like mom there's no way I'm going here but then I got here and saw the campus and was like oh I kind of like it I don't know what I'm going to do and it's been the best choice I could have ever made I get to do cool things like this with these cool guys and I get to have so many different opportunities to be involved on campus that you wouldn't get at bigger universities. And like she was mentioning with the professors, the relationships you can have is something that is so unique and I think you don't find at many other universities these days. And it's a big change for me to be here in Hayes from Denver because I went to a huge school and I'm from a huge town. So this is very, very different for me, but it's awesome. All right. Um I'm Josh Doak. I'm from Rush, Colorado. It's, it's 45 miles east of Colorado Springs. Um, my experience is a little bit different than theirs in high school. I graduated with six kids in my high school, so I was a very small, small town kid. Um, but whenever I came to Fort Hayes, I just I wanted to go to a smaller school to get that personal feel. So CU and CSU were out of you know thought for me, but I didn't really want to go to the mountains either. So I turned. I turned east to see what was out there and and come to find out I found Fort Hayes and actually me and one of another kid in my class actually came out to Fort Hayes together as well and we I came out here on campus visit and the, the visit was so personable so I was able to meet with that mission counselor and actually a professor here during the middle of summertime and meet with the basketball coaches and anybody I want to talk to they offered it for me 
and I just came out here and just fell in love with the whole area, the community. It's just definitely, I'm an agriculture kid, and I definitely just fell in love with the community. They have the same same meaning, and, and Fort Hayes State is basically the, the community place for all of the Hayes community, and that's what I was used to. So I just fell in love with it, and I got involved on campus, and I just haven't turned back and graduated here, and we moving to Indiana here shortly, and um, everything I've learned from Fort Hayes State is definitely going to help me in my next step. All right, so I think we'll be moving on to questions. So if you guys have any questions, just type them in. We don't have any that have come in yet. So I guess we could move on to questions that we get normally during some of our orientations and stuff, which some of you might have already had um, experienced since you probably visited. But um, one popular question that Josh gets asked almost every time is, where do you like to eat in Hayes? Um, well, I've experienced a lot of places to eat in Hayes since being here for, for four years now. It's been um, a traveling place to go to. Um, Everybody loves Cancun because it's right off campus, so you can really walk there for lunches all the time. And the Golden Q is a place where all the alumni get come back to because it's been here forever, and so they just like coming back here for a Q burger. But there's also a place downtown that I that we really enjoy, and it's a, it's a popular place in Kansas as well. Is uh, Gellas? It's one of the top it, and the 20 places to go in Kansas. Gellas is, is one of those places, and it's in our small downtown area, and it's a great place to get some some home cooking food, but some, some German heritage as well. So we have a lot of different options here at Hayes, hey, so you, you should never get bored. All right, we have our first question, and it's what is what was it like moving into the dorms, or do you have any advice for cramming everything into a small space? I think I got this one. So I'm a girl, so therefore I have a lot of stuff. And um, I had two and a half car loads to get everything there, but I came, I uh, actually came back in Thanksgiving with a car load again because I didn't need all my stuff. Um, you know, when you're thinking about all the things that you need for college, think simple like bedding, uh, towels, like all your toiletries, and all your like schoolwork stuff, so like computer, notebooks, all that stuff, and that is it. <laughs> if you bring a uh, ironing board and an iron, you probably will use it once. Um, or best thing um, is also to just outlet and network, whether it's through your dorms and your learning communities or through um, organizations on campus. Most people have a lot of things, like if you need an ironing board and an iron, you can come hit me up. <laughs> but honestly, um, you don't cram everything in a small space unless you have a lot of stuff that you need to cram, so just plan. <laughs> I think is by now you guys have your roommates or, or that will be coming here shortly. And the best thing is basically to to work with them and see what they have. You know, you don't need two refrigerators, you don't need two TVs, mm -hmm. and, and you get a bed and you can turn that into a bunk bed. So uh, many people I've seen bring in their own beds or couches and they fill up their space because both of their roommates bring the double stuff. So definitely coordinate with your roommate to see what you have and what they have so you're able to not be overpacked. Um, another really good question that we have is, can freshmen have their cars? And the answer is yes. Um, parking is not ideal, and it is kind of cramped for the amount of students we have with cars. But it's definitely possible. You just have to realize you're not going to get front row parking every time and have to walk a little bit. But definitely, it, it, it is beneficial, especially if you're coming from Colorado. I know a lot of kids that have come out here with, from Colorado with no cars, and they have a hard time getting home. So definitely just to be able to bring a crowd here and park it somewhere, there's nothing wrong with that. And the parking passes are cheap here on campus, so even if you come and park here on campus and people are driving around, catch a ride with them where you can walk. And we also do have the access bus, which is our public transportation on campus. So you give them a call during the day. I think it's like $1.50 for any ride, and you can go all the way over to Walmart, wherever you need to go to. So definitely use that. Um. Um, one of the other questions that I do get a lot is about how you keep in contact with your friends and family um, and how to get back home and how often to. Um, I, <laughs> I have an old car, so we can't travel that well, but uh, I do take the Greyhound bus occasionally. Yes, uh, <laughs> some people think that it might be a little weird, but 
do uh, take the bus like on the weekends at 5.45 a.m. and you get home at 10 and have lunch and dinner with your family. And that's that's really great. And like round trip is 100 bucks. And then they also have like these student uh, advantage tickets where you can get a uh, discount for every time that you use it. So that's really actually pretty great. Um, and then again, I, I believe in networking so much. Um, I joined Greek Life when I was here, and a bunch of my sorority sisters are from Colorado. And so we were able to carpool or uh, go together to try and find, um, like, if her mom was coming to town and could drive both of us back, it was it worked out well. Um, I don't go home that often during the school time, but it's just because I'm busy with work and everything else that's going on campus. But I think it's actually beneficial to stay here because again you get to experience more of what college is all about and see your friends and your family will understand when you're busy so I have a question. you know how do you guys pronounce it so it's <laughs> mcmidas yeah. that is silent <laughs> yes the yes, end silent <laughs> and another one is weast i've heard mm -hmm. weast called many different names so mcmidas and we trust me, I did the same exact. My grandma still calls it Nick Yeah, yeah. Really close, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, another great question. Um, working on campus, do you recommend it? How do you find openings, and where should I apply? Um, the best place to to work on campus, I highly recommend it. I don't. I actually haven't had an off, off campus job since I've been here. Um, so the best thing to do is on, on a Tiger Tracks, Tiger Tracks account. There's a job X down a little pretty much down at, at the bottom right above your Tiger Enroll and you're able to press on that. You have the options of looking for work study jobs. If you qualify for, for work study, you can click on that, that and it goes only work study jobs or there's non work study as well. Um, I definitely recommend working on work study, maybe talking to financial aid. I know whenever I came here my second year I didn't qualify. So I went to financial aid to see what I would take to qualify for it. And they actually got me set up to qualify for financial aid or for work study. So many um, departments on campus are looking for people to work study and even if you're not work study they'll hire you just like I said I've always worked on campus I enjoy it because you work 20 hours a week so you're getting enough money to have fun on the weekends and and to go back home with somebody or to eat out but you're also not overloading yourself and still being able to study and most of those hours are during 8 to 4 30 as well so you're not working the night shift or a graveyard shift you are working a regular school day and what we're mostly all used to working eight to four. So. And the other great thing about it is that all of the jobs on campus, whoever your boss is, knows that you're a student, so knows that around finals time you're gonna need maybe a little bit more time off. Or if there's a big test that just gets sprung on you, they're usually super understanding, so it's not something you have to worry about, as like you would if you got a job off campus. Um, a lot of, or another question that we have here is, are there a lot of students coming to Fort Hayes from Colorado? And this question, I got asked a lot, and I was surprised to know that it is yes. Um, when I first came here, I was by myself. I was the only person I knew. And when uh, Tiger and Pack Week started happening, I kept saying, oh, well, I'm like the only one from Colorado. And they're like, no, they're not. I am too. Oh, no, I am too. And it's so crazy to think about just like, how many people actually do come here? There's three of us. Like we we never met like until we were in OL, and here we are, all from Colorado, all doing what we love. So there are a lot of people from Colorado, and it's a great state to be from. Yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. the most kids. So out of Nebraska, Oklahoma, and all the neighboring states, we get most kids coming from Colorado. So you're not. Um, it's it's not uncommon to have Colorado kids. Whenever I moved out here, I just knew one of my um, classmates and the rest of the people I didn't know and right on my floor do, door down from me was a kid from Colorado and five doors down the other way was another kid from Colorado and we're best friends one of them actually joined a fraternity with me so it's just you find those connections easily and all the Colorado kids are looking for each other and especially if you've seen on Facebook we're on the Colorado territory so you can see all those people and, and meet the Colorado people before you showing up so that way you can get to know them whenever they show up on campus face to face so definitely do that um, there's a question here about what should I expect on move-in day. Lots uh, of fun. Lots of fun. <laughs> move-in day is a, a little, little bit hectic. Um, they've actually done really well, though, to be able to 
or people through. During move-in day, there will be student organizations such as Greek Life will be there as well as the football team and, and more of the athletic departments there, helping kids move in, carry yourself upstairs, whatever you need. So they'll help you kind of shift through and, and get your um, car unloaded, and so then you, your parents can go park the car and kind of help you unpack. Um, but they basically, we have the, the, the day kind of scheduled for you to be able to um, transition into moving in and going to college and having your parents leave you eventually. So it, it, it's a chaotic time, but it's really fun because you really meet everyone on your floor because they're always walking by and you get to meet all the new people and it's just excitement of move-in day. So definitely just follow the schedule um, and, go, and participate in all the activities that you need to. That, that will help you for the setup for the rest of your semester. One thing to remember on move-in day is that it is going to be hectic. The elevators are going to be packed. Uh, there will be a big line of traffic, so don't get too frustrated too quickly because it's just bound to happen. We only have so much space for so many people moving in. All the crying parents and all the kids just, oh, mom, leave. So just be understanding, <laughs> so don't rush too much. And I kind of answered the next question, which is, do the residence halls have elevators? And the answer is yes, all of them do. McMinus has four, we used, I don't know. Two, we says two, Agnew and then and Agnew and Heather both have one. So all of them are accessible to everybody. However, I believe it is great to take the stairs. <laughs> um, I lived on the sixth floor of McMinus, and I did, I'm proud to say I did not get to freshman 15 because of those stairs. And I cannot tell you how many times uh, those elevators broke. So I recommend stairs, even though the elevator is an option. <laughs> all right, another question we have is what's the biggest difference from Colorado to Kansas? Um, I'm going to talk um, from, because I'm from Eastern Colorado, so there's not much difference between Kansas here and Colorado, but I am still close enough, like an hour away from the mountains, so you don't get to see the mountains very much, so um, that is something that, that is a difference, is you don't get to see those nice Colorado mountains, and um, coming back, going home for the summer and coming back, especially here in the fall, it's going to be a lot more humid here than it is in Colorado, um, so I started for about the first two weeks that I was here, Every time that I kind of was sweating everywhere. So that's my biggest difference of my like pet peeves of Kansas. That's the only difference to me is not being able to see the mountains and it's a lot more humid here. So I guess um, one of the biggest things I would say is just like coming from Denver, I had multiple of everything to do. I had, you know, countless movie theaters, countless bowling alleys, everything I could ever want to do, all the restaurants I could ever want. And here you have one movie theater, you have one golf course, one bowling alley. Like you actually have to find things to do yourself and make friendships and <laughs> interact with other people all the time. You don't have something to do all the time. But you know it's one of my favorite things that I've that I've experienced here at Hayes because you actually form meaningful relationships and you can have a conversation with people, which is not common these days, which is really sad, but it happens here because you kind of have to. And then the other thing is just the food is just different um, in, in every way. I'll talk about that one. Um, my biggest difference from Kansas, Colorado is I am a big time mountain girl. I love mountains, but I'm also very much so into the city and it's very weird um, coming here and not having my Starbucks and Super Walmart right next to Super Target and inside it having to use subways. Like <laughs> it's very different but you make it work and the other thing that was weird was the agriculture because that is not big for where I come from, shopping <laughs> is. And so I, I remember one of my first weeks coming here, this guy was walking to class with me and he had these giant cowboy boots and spurs on. And I called my mom like crying, I was so scared. I was like, what is he gonna do? Why does he have bigger heels than me? But <laughs> it's a lot of fun and you get to see a completely different culture. So I enjoy that. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the questions we got is, do you often drive home with people from or near your hometown? Um, Greeley is where this is coming from. Uh, yes, I do. Um, one of my sorority sisters is from Brighton, and so that's just like a 30-minute drive outside of where I live. And so it's just like on the way, and that works great for me. Yeah, I mean, I've carpooled with people from Denver, people from like the surrounding suburbs, and even with people from Colorado Springs, and then they just have someone come pick them up in Denver and find another way down to Colorado Springs. I mean, it makes a lot more sense just money-wise. I mean, it's boring. It is a boring drive, I won't lie to you. So having someone with you is so nice, and then you can 
you know, I mean, it's not a super long drive, but it's long enough and boring enough to where having someone and trading is really nice. And even if you'll meet people that aren't um, from Kansas or anywhere and they have to fly out to go home. And so a lot of times people fly out from DIA. So I've um, taken a lot of people back with me and then, you know, split the gas and then they fly out from DIA and then on their way back, I pick them up and, I mean, plenty of options. I don't think it should be a problem. The next question I, I like to address because I do the same thing. Um, the question is um, getting the sense of direction in Kansas because we're all used to going west is the mountains and going east is away from the mountains. So here I've actually kind of figured it out because now I can actually say north, south, east, and west after oh, four great years. Okay. So, so, so campus, you just have to think of campus as and, and go towards the big roads. So on the west side of campus, we have the bypass. So if you need to go to the bypass, that's west. If you need to go to Vine, that's east. And the interstate is always north of us, and then just the opposite way of the interstate is south. So that's the best way that I could do it is, is going by big roads in, in Hayes because there's, there are no landmarks, really. Now we have the wind turbines, so those are kind of towards the west. Um, but definitely, that's how I do the roads because the campus is kind of right in the middle of all those three major roads. And then just like the mountains, we just go away from it. So if you go away from the interstate, you're going south. So yeah. that's how I do it. So that's I my best way of figuring out. So there you guys go. So hopefully that helps you guys figure out. You guys out. are welcome so. too. <laughs> I didn't know that. I've been here for three years. <laughs> I just figured out a couple like last year. So. <laughs> So, I do the same exact thing. I just think, okay, west, I want to go home. Okay, that's mm -hmm. that way. <laughs> that so, east. And all the roads go, go, you know, straight north or south or east and west. So mm -hmm. you, they're all they're all cubes around here. So you guys will be just fine being able to, to drive around. There's not a big issue. Just have to worry about one way. That's about it. But mm -hmm. read sign, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another question is, what kind of opportunities are there for someone who likes to travel? Um, plenty of options. We have tons of study abroad options. There's even a study abroad uh, like fair at the beginning of the year. It's kind of one of the first 40 day things and all the options will be there. I mean there's I've known people that have gone to Spain, China, France, everywhere. I went to Peru twice with my learning community but um, some other people also got to tag along on those trips so it's not limited. But there are tons of different opportunities, and the best part about it is they're all really affordable. That's something that they really focus on, I know. And for each and every travel opportunity, there's always a scholarship you can apply to, and so it makes it even more affordable to everyone. I also do like to point out that if you if you want to travel internationally, we have those options, but if you want to travel like within our country and you want to go to a larger university, I, I know many people that went a semester at University of Washington or went to Oklahoma State University, you're able to go and go, go there for a semester, pay 4 day state tuition, and be able to kind of experience if you're thinking that you really want to go to 4 day state, but at some point in your career you thought, well, what if I could have gone to a bigger school? We have those student exchange that so you're able to do that, test it out for a semester, and being able to kind of get that experience at a larger school. I know many kids that, that go to the larger schools, they love it, but then they realize even more that they love 4 day state and the choice they made. Um, but that is also something that they like to take care of. You know, in the back of the mind, you always wonder. So you get those opportunities to go, go to a large university without having to pay a large cost, but mm -hmm. also being able to come back to the place you love. Um, now, coming or coming to school in Hayes, America, um, a lot of people are wondering what there is to do for fun. And Jay kind of touched on some of those uh, bowling uh, movies. Movies are four dollars. Four dollars. I used to have to pay twenty dollars mm -hmm. for a movie. It was. It's crazy for me to uh, think about that. And you got that discount with your Tiger ID. Um, there is the mall. It's literally called the mall. <laughs> There's 24-hour Walmart, and you get to see some pretty great oh. people. Um, <laughs> um, there is uh, country two uh, stepping and line dancing at the Rose, and I I think that's fun, even though I have two left feet. Um, there are also so many events on campus, like almost every weekend. There's um, one of my favorite things is After Darks, and um, they're put on from UAB, which is the University Activity Board, and they usually do a lot um, as well, like bringing in Logan Myers, and uh, we had a we had a we had magicians, we had lots of things. But After Darks are like themed uh, events where you could do a bunch during it, like. There's been Hunger Games, Harry Potter, 
you got to make your own wand for that one. I still have it. Um, they have events uh, like stuff a tiger. So it's like build a bear, but you stuff a tiger. It's pretty cute. My mom now has those and is proud of it. Um, and, you know, also like when you, if you want to get involved, um, I usually say when you get involved because it's, it's a really great thing to get involved. Um, there's so many things on the weekends that you can do and just during the week um, that are so much fun. Um, yeah, but just keep posted and check your emails, your student emails. They usually let you know what's going on and what to do for fun. So. All right, we have a question on if you would recommend having a loft book bed or a regular bed, like I'm assuming dorms. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of went through a different experience whenever I came here. I left them just where they're at mm -hmm. just to see how everything felt. By the end of the semester, I had mine bunked up because I had a lot of stuff and I wanted to bring stuff in. And then we got like a cheap futon that, that we put underneath it. So I started out just initially how it is to see if I liked it because I'm only a child used to the single twin bed and I've never actually been a part of a bunk bed setting. So whenever I realized that I needed more room though, I, I bunked it up and the faculty or the, the staff in my residential life um, dorm took care of that for us so you just put it in a work order and they can move it up or move it down if you want to so um, but for me personally that's what I did I think it's more of a personal setting as well but I don't know what you guys did. I bunked my bed I think the entire time but I did move mine at one point and then we also had a futon in our room I don't know bunking it just gives you more room um, the way my roommate and I did it was every, like Every six weeks, we'd switch who was on top, so it was fair, because neither of us totally wanted to be on top, but didn't quite mind it, so we just switched. I mean, there's always things. Some people love top bunks, some people don't, so it really just depends. Um, you'll find a compromise that works best for you, and it really depends how much stuff you have, to be really honest. So I kept my bed where it was at, and I loved it there. <laughs> I also knew a lot of people that did have their bunk and had a lot of problems with that, like, they were tall and always hit their head on the ceilings, or they hated actually having to like climb out of bed to go to class. And so it's up to you and your personal opinion, but there's nothing wrong with it. But when it first starts, just say it. <laughs> you can always change it around. You can always so. change it. <laughs> um, okay, so this one we'll just all have to go down the line with this um, and hold on because it'll be a long one. Um, what clubs and organizations are you part of? Um, for me, I am part of Greek life. I'm in a sorority. Um, I'm also in U um, AUW. I was thinking about UAB, but I'm in AUW, and it's um, American uh, Women's uh, Group to tr sort of like empower women in their rights and uh, promote college women leaders. It's actually pretty cool. Um, it doesn't. It might not sound cool to you guys, but I like it. Um, and then I was also in Christian Challenge. Um, I led women's ministry for. Uh, quite some time, and uh, yeah. Oh well, I'm also in fans, which is part of this um, association of nursing students, and it's really cool because we um, feed the faculty and staff sometimes with a dollar for a bowl of soup. It's called Bucket Bowl. So if you guys ever hear about those, you can totally come in and sort of support fans. But yeah. Um, I always forget something when I talk about these, but um. One of the biggest things is what we all do is orientation I'm assistance. About that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's like one of the biggest things that I've enjoyed, just getting to know people coming in and then you just know people on campus of all ages is really nice. And then you just get the experience of meeting more faculty that are outside of your major. You get to learn stuff about the university that I never would have known. You get to, you know, participate in uh, is a play fair? Yeah. Play fair more than once, which is great. And um, I'm in. I always do this. I I've just joined a lot of different things. Oh, Tigers Forever! That's one of the newest things. <laughs> um, we're really expanding it. It's a pro, it's a group where we're trying to include the alumni and have them interact more with um, current students and just to keep that going and then we also uh, for Tigers Forever put on the bonfire which is big here on campus it's become a new tradition we're trying to bring back old traditions because they're all really cool just like we used to have a kazoo band and I think that is so cool um, I'm blanking on the rest of my things but I know there are more so just 
Yeah, okay. Um, I have a long list, but remember, <laughs> I've been here for four years, so um, <laughs> over time they accumulate. So, of course, or, orientation leaders, um, I've been involved in Greek life. I'm um, in Sigma Chi fraternity, and so that's been a um, college changer, definitely, for, for me, and life changer. I've also been in intramurals. When I first showed up here, I got in intramurals because I, I want to stay involved in sports as much as possible, but um, collegiate sports was not in the deck for me, so the best thing to do was to officiate sports and, and be involved in intramurals. So that got me involved in um, officiating high school basketball, high school soccer, football, and, ba and baseball. So there's a lot of opportunities with that. I've also been in VIP ambassadors, um, which is basically um, President Hammond has, has 25 students um, be part of basically the student ambassadors to boosters, and if he has any um, dinners, um, we've had representatives from China, senators come, and, and we're just basically the, the student voice to them. So that was also cool that we're able to work directly with President Hammond as well. Um, I've also been in charge of Order of Omega, which is our honor society for, for Greek life. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the only reason I know a lot of these because I've been telling them to mo multiple people for interviews. Um, so there's a lot of things on campus to, to be involved in. And within all the student organizations, you're in charge of a lot of things on campus. Um, we, All of us have been a part of the bonfire, putting that together, because that was all student ran. And so that's a great thing. We have many things, such as the tree lighting, which celebrates um, the holidays coming in in the wintertime. And we're all part of that. So, And we also do have many things on campus, such as um, uh, Tigers in Service, sorry, that's that's a great thing I like to plug just because Tigers in Service is something that you can be a part of and not actually go to any meetings or join anything. You can just be a part of it and, and spend some time either volunteering abroad or within our Hayes community, so they always have options going. So. All right, so this is our last question. Um, what is the most awkward, funniest experience you had your freshman year? Oh my goodness. I know, it's hard to get I Well, oh, I got this. Um, so I had to take microbiology for allied health, and um, there's a kid in our class that was on uh, Sigma Chi, and he lost a bet with someone where he had to come into our classroom and say that there's a troll in the dungeon, and then say, yeah. thought I have to tell you, and fainted in front of our class. And the teacher just totally accepted it. And yeah, he just looks at him, and then he's like, so, and he keeps lecturing. <laughs> <laughs> that was one. Um, another one, I showed up an hour early to class. Um, I read my schedule wrong, and my teacher was like, oh, are you in your class? And I said, yeah. She's like, well, you're going to be my favorite student because you're an hour early. Like, oh. <laughs> um, I guess my I showed up an hour early, but I was in the wrong class. And, but instead of getting up and leaving, I sat through the entire class, and I even got a syllabus. Wow. <laughs> that was wow. a good one. Wow, that's um, I got my best friend by accident for through another kid. Um, I played football against this kid probably for like four years, and we've never actually like seen each other. We never really connect like. I've seen him before, but it never really hit me. And we were just walking one day, and I'm from a very small school, so I really just didn't assume anybody knew where I was from. So I said where I was from, and he's like, yeah, we play guys in football, and we play six-man football. So obviously that was just the smallest world ever. And then it comes to find out that he lived right across the hall from me, and so we've just been best friends ever. So it's like one of those weird, great factors that, that you get because it's just a small world here at Fort Hayes State University. So. Um, you'll never know who you'll talk to or who you'll find, and it's just a great experience. Or if you show up an hour early to class. Don't be ashamed to sit there, <laughs> grab a syllabus. It's okay. Frame it. We weren't affected by it, oh, so oh, we're still cool. we're still good. <laughs> but you guys had some awesome questions today. Keep them coming. You guys can find us on pretty much any social media. Um, and keep them coming. We'll see you guys in August, which is coming up faster than you know. So. Good luck. We'll see you soon. <laughs> All right. Well, before you log off, real quick, uh, just for a couple of reminders here before you log off, um, I'm actually going to turn the floor over to probably a familiar face for several of you. Um, Brittany is one of um, our Fort Hayes State University admissions counselors, um, and she is going to provide a little bit of um, information, next steps, reminders before you come to campus. So. All right.
Hi guys, it's so nice to be in contact with you all again. I'm getting really excited because we are getting ready for what could quite possibly be the biggest class of Colorado um, students that we've ever had at Fort Hayes. So um, just want to double check with you guys, make sure that you know everything that you need to get done. Um, first thing guys, check and make sure that you've filled out your housing application. If you haven't gotten a placement yet, um, some of the later ones, they are still placing. So just be watching your email for that. Another thing that you all need to do is, okay, so um, if you pre-enrolled for classes, you put the classes in your schedule, you probably came to campus or did it over the phone. One thing you need to do now is to log back into that Tiger role. Go to the very last tab that says enrollment slash payment and you need to set up your payment arrangements. That's going to be your finalizing of your classes. And um, if you don't do this before August 6, your classes are going to be dropped from your schedule. We definitely don't want that to happen. So uh, if you get stuck anywhere, you can definitely call me. My number is 785-639-3738. You guys know I'm always happy to talk to you. You can also Facebook me, whatever else. Um, otherwise, I'm really going to look forward to seeing you guys on August 14th for move-in day. I will definitely be there helping you lug your boxes around. So we'll look forward to seeing you then. Have a great rest of your week, guys. Thanks for participating with us today. Keep these conversations going. So if you have more questions for Jade or Josh or Gina, um, utilize the FHSU Tigers in a New Territory Facebook page, um, and you can connect with some other, both new Colorado students as well as other out-of-state students there. So thank you so much for participating in today's webinar. Have a great day.